Hi, my name's Bill Hoheber, and welcome to this low gear special covering the Wheels at Wanaka event recently held at Easter. Unlike Europe, New Zealand is a relatively new country. When people arrived here, they brought with them the tools to make the farms, the roads, the towns, and eventually the cities. In the early 20th century, wheeled machines began to arrive. Cars, trucks, tractors, and in fact, as farms had their horses replaced by early tractors, they thought they were made. Even though there was a bit of a rigmarole to get them started, they just got on with the job. You didn't have to feed them, water them, they just did it. Being New Zealand, the machines came from all over the world. And as such, we have some of the rarest machines, particularly tractors, in the world here. We also had our share of traction engines that worked the land so well back in the day. Trucks came in the 19-teens, 20s and 30s, and we still have a lot of these trucks, some restored, some not. After World War II, the rules changed and we imported mainly British cars, and so we had three decades of British cars and other machines. We built our roads, hydro dams, mines and other big projects using a variety of earth moving machine in the 1940s and 50s. I'd like to congratulate Alan Dippy, Robert Duncan, Paul Clark, George Wallace and others who planned this Wheels at Wanaka event, a wonderful tribute to New Zealand's vehicle history. So what we're going to do now is take a trip down memory lane, have a look what's here, starting with the horses. Before the machines came, horses were the way we travelled and horses were the way we got things done. These two draft horses are very big and strong and horses like them would have played their part in building this great country of ours. Good on you guys, great display. The old traction engine came to New Zealand in the late 19th century, mainly from England, and they were used for a variety of reasons. This one has a trailer full of logs. And back in those days, there seemed to be plenty of them. There's about eight or so in this old railway yard. And here's an old photograph of one with three trailer loads of wool. I guess all those people helped load it. <laughs> And another one loaded with flax, and flax was a major product back in the day. They made rope out of it. Here's an interesting photograph of two traction engines with two trailers, each loaded with power poles. A great need for power poles back then. And in this photograph, you can see how they loaded the poles onto the trailers. Two beams up to the deck, and they roll the poles up the beams by hand. I guess they may have done that in the logging situation as well, but all by hand, amazing. Here's two trailers loaded with steel tubes off to somewhere. Note the caravan being towed behind. This is a Garrett steam truck made in England. There are a lot of different makes of steam trucks back in the day, Foden, Sentinel and others. One interesting aspect of steam trucks is they were made up until about 1935. They used traction engines on the farms as well ploughing the fields, and being so powerful they could tow a few more ploughs. Certainly far more than horses could, that's for sure. They also used them to run farm machinery, like this machine for sorting out the char from the wheat. They also used them to run sawmills, and that big belt ran circular saws. So moving right along, we come to moving houses. They shifted many a house back in the day, so plenty of uses for them, that's for sure. Their only problem was they were slow, 5 to 12 miles per hour. Here's another one waiting to hitch up to its three trailers, a bit like the Aussie road train. Here's one taking a mill out to the field ready for a day's work. And finally, another three trailer loads of wool arriving at the wool stores. Next, all the traction engines have lined up for a whistle to finale. Hi everyone, my new book, Talking Trucks, is now available. I'll just read you what Alex McClellan of McClellan Freight in Balclutha had to say in the foreword. This book is the result of many miles travelled, many people met 
and many vehicles and machines documented. As people pass on, their stories go with them. So it was great that Bill and Linda could document their stories, not only for their historic value to New Zealand, but also to the families of the people who took the time to pass it on through Bill's shows. I think this book goes some way to honouring that responsibility. Thank you, Alex. I also spoke to Gavin Abbott. And uh, Gavin, as you know, is a, an author himself, written something like six or seven or eight trucking books. And he said, well, Bill, I, as you know, I've read a few trucking books books in my time, but I have to tell you that this book is up there with the best of them. So there you go. If you'd like to get your copy, the easiest way is to go to our webpage at www.lowgear.co.nz or flick me an email, billhohepper at extra.co.nz or perhaps even just give me a call, 027 277 0717 and we can sort out the details. So there you go, Talking Trucks, now available and maybe you get your copy for a gift for Father's Day. In this section, we look at the cars that came to the wheels at Wanaka event. But just by way of introduction, cars came to New Zealand in the early 20th century, including some very rare makes and models. By the end of the 1920s, they were everywhere. Back in the day, scenes like this were commonplace in the rural sector. In the 1940s, city car parks had their share of the cars of the time. A day at the races was a popular thing. In the 1950s and 60s, the British cars could be seen at the beach as well. So let's have a look at some of the cars that came to the wheels at Wanaka event. Joining me now is Robbie Shelford, a respected videographer in the world of vehicles. Big 50. Big 50. Doesn't look very big, though, does it? No. Plenty of room in the back, right? Yeah, that's dead right. Uh, the back pin is about 215 mils bigger than the light bulb. Right. It's actually it's pretty. got a wee back colour in this one. Yeah. Bed but... seat, six in the front. <laughs> hey. Six in the front, no worries. Bye, yeah. right, kids. <laughs> Oh, uh, you've done a wonderful job. It looks beautiful. Uh, hopefully this year it's getting a new paint job. Red? A few bit of rust and it's oh, starting okay. to bubble up under the doors and stuff. No, nah, marvellous. As long as the new paint job doesn't ruin it though. Oh, no, it's not the original colour. Oh, OK. Yeah. I think he's in a hurry. In a he is in a Hang hurry. on. Yeah. That's sweet. I thought you could get a Ford any colour you like, as long as it was black. <laughs> Must be one of the later model ones. One, I think you cheated. <laughs> be easy. I, I could probably just pick that up and turn it over That's to a, Joe Chains. French it. version of a trekker. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Mark Go one. Tina. <laughs> I had a call Tina when I was younger. Did you? This is his mate. Yeah. Look at that. The Rover. Good old British. <laughs> <laughs> Now there's a popular car. Remember these when I was uh, going to school? Chrysler. Yeah, Chrysler. Brilliant. Yeah. The old man had one of them bench seats. It's got the, it's got the sloping engine. Yeah. I, had, I actually own three of these, the old Wolseley. Mum and three kids in the back. Off we go, 610. Yeah. Something flash. They've got uh, something like um, 80, 80 or 90 hose clips in them. It's old, these jacks. Look at that? Yeah. Oops, I shouldn't swear. <laughs> Look at this. Now this is basic. It's a, an engine, old... a chassis, a fuel tank, yeah. where to sit and away you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, no creature comforts or anything like that. And the old Beaver. Look at that. I mean, he's got the wee model collection in the boot of that one. I think you, can get, I think you and me are out. Yeah, yeah, this. No, we wouldn't get in that. <laughs> my, my knees would be up around my chin. The old Pulitzer. Look at that. Oh, covered in aerial. Look at that. As That's as, as yeah, as 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 a rabbit trap on the pack. Exhaust pipe hanging up. Uh, uh, half a dead rabbit still in it. Left hand drive Ford, yeah. must be an import. There's not many two doors came to the old jailbar. Oh, now this, this, this is. <laughs> That's class. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Another Jag. These have got 100 hose clips. 
It'd be easy to fix them, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, well, All you need is a screwdriver. Yeah. Oh, that's about a 50, 55, 54 of them. 54. Yeah. Beautiful. And the Mark III Zephyr. A Maori's dream. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> I made the whole lot of it. <laughs> the strip that right out was only boot and just left in it. Really? Wow. The Macho yeah. Acre, one family owned all its life. Really? That's all I got. Beautiful. Is that a standard place for the aerial on them? That was in the day. That, oh. That's American aerial. Oh, that's a standard place for them? Yeah. Huh. The original one was a 14 inch top water. Had two, two yeah. had bloody flags on the top. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, little, little pennants out here with said Avondale College. We, 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 we flag some of that. The flag is a bear the arrow's way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, has it got a V8 in it? No. Sounds like six. Where am I hearing the V8? Is that this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my mother had one of these. All of them. Yep, all of them. The singer. Look at that. I, th I thought singers, you know, were just, you know, the, the old uh, sewing machines. Yeah, all they are. But they I've a singer did, did cars as well, or different companies? This has got an engine on the far side, which means the passenger's legs are up around the knees. Poor old thing. Yeah, it's still late. <laughs> oh, you've done a wonderful job. This is before they did the hose pumps. The LED, route, LED lights ruin that you. Did he? Believe it, don't they? The British like those things. You see one around, they're all palms. Yeah. British. Now here we have a Fiat. Fiat, when you think Fiat, you think little double car. Fiat Bambina, Fiat, Bambina, Fiat Tractor. <laughs> hey? No, it's a wee bit bigger than the old Bambina, isn't it? Is this New Zealand new? Yes, we saw it underneath. Underneath, good on you. One lady owner only drove it to church on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last one at least is a Jack. Looks beautiful. I'm very, very well. Yeah. 29 years of the uh, Model T. 29 years. Didn't change much. Well, that, that's the thing. If it ain't broke, why change it? It's, well, Ford just loved it. Henry, Henry, they were just the bee's knees for him. Though. That's the doctor's car. <laughs> All the doctors had those. Oh, okay. Go out to visit you. Yeah, well, back in the day, yeah, when the doctor did house calls. Rivals wasn't it? of Doug Hood. Little model A. Eh? Rivals of Doug Hood Limited. Model A, model A, model A. Various models. Oh. Two door Ford. Right hand. A drawer. Bonnie and Clyde one, isn't it? Yeah. Spare wheel up on two spare yeah. wheels up on the mud guards. That's flash. Actually, well, in saying that, you know, there's one over the back with a spare wheel on it. A lot of them back in the old days used to have the old jerry can on the side of the mud guard there as well, didn't they? Yeah. Another two door. The sheriff. I don't know how he got here. Who shot the sheriff? Who shot the sheriff? Convertible 1951. That's the same as my uh, 1951 Studebaker. That's what Ford dished out at the same time. I think the Studebaker looks better. And to close it all up is the old Rolls-Royce Ghost. 600 horsepower, three and a half ton. Other cars that weren't in the ring, but were on static display, was George Wallace's collection of baby Austins. Also a collection of Packards, Cadillacs and the like. Mostly restored by Robert Duncan. Hi everyone, my new book, Talking Trucks, is now available. I'll just read you what Alex McClellan of McClellan Freight in Balclutha had to say in the foreword. This book 
is the result of many miles travelled, many people met, and many vehicles and machines documented. As people pass on, their stories go with them. So it was great that Bill and Linda could document their stories, not only for their historic value to New Zealand, but also to the families of the people who took the time to pass it on through Bill's shows. I think this book goes some way to honouring that responsibility. Thank you, Alex. I also spoke to Gavin Abbott, and uh, Gavin, as you know, is a, an author himself, written something like six or seven or eight trucking books, and he said, well, Bill, as you know, I've read a few trucking books in my time, but I have to tell you that this book is up there with the best of them. So there you go. If you'd like to get your copy, the easiest way is to go to our webpage at www.lowgear.co.nz or flick me an email, billhohepper at extra.co.nz or perhaps even just give me a call, 027 277 0717 and we can sort out the details. So there you go, Talking Trucks, now available and maybe you get your copy for a gift for Father's Day. Well, we've seen lots of stuff that's going on here at Wanaka, and with me is Annabelle. Yeah, Annabelle. Good How are you? Good to have you on board. Thank you for being here. You're one of the persons that's running around like a blue ass fly <laughs> trying to organise everybody and everything. Blue jacket flies this weekend, but yeah. The, the blue jacket guy. Yeah. Now, how many people, do you know any idea how many people have been here already? Oh, uh, my rough estimate is between 1,500 and 15,000 bills, so we'll, <laughs> we'll tell you at the end of today. <laughs> and this, this ring behind us, is you've had uh, horses, steam trains, trucks, cars, and steam engines, and, and Correct. a good variety of anything that's got a wheel. Correct. Motorbikes, trucks, hundreds and hundreds of tractors which are about to parade again, uh, vehicles of all odd varieties. Uh, anything that's got wheels or tracks is, is here this weekend and very welcome. I know that Alan Dickey and uh, Robert Duncan were the guys that sort of thought this up in the first place. Correct. And uh, what a huge pint they've taken, you know, to sort of, yeah I know, let's, let's do a, a wheels at Wanaka and think about what does that involve. Well that involves half the country bringing transporters. That's right. Here. And some guys even driving their tractors with a little hurry on behind. That's you know? right. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big commitment from Alan, uh, who's the tractor guy, Robert, who's the car guy. He's also the earthworks guy. Paul Clark is also the earthworks guy. Uh, the West Otago Vintage Club uh, have been a, a driver behind this as well. It originally started because they wanted uh, a, a prominent place to celebrate their 60 years uh, of, of their club. So they went to Robert, who then went to Alan, and they said, look, rather than just having vintage machinery, why don't we throw in tractors and then trucks and why not do earth moving and then why not invite some motorbikes and then some electric cars and, and now you name it, it turned up. And this is a two year event? Correct. So it's sort of opposite the Wanaka yeah, Warbirds. That's right, we're calling it every odd year to Warbirds over Wanaka. So uh, 2021 we'll be back. This has been our, this is day two of our event ever so we've, had, we've learned a lot, we've had a lot of fun uh, and what we're learning is that people are really passionate about their vehicles. Absolutely. They knew it. I had no idea the madness. <laughs> so I've had a lovely time here. Yeah, it's like a fishing boat. Once it gets the <laughs> there, you've had it. Well, I, yeah, I don't think I'll be buying one anytime soon, but I'm going to have a go at driving some later. That's oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So one of the highlights for you? Uh, one of the highlights for me, I think... Certainly the tractor parade yesterday where they had three or four tractors deep around this uh, yes. custom made parade ring. The sun amazing. was shining, the old fellas were skipping like spring lambs. Uh, it was just it was Smile just on most faces. so good to see. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the a lot of the guys driving them. So we have uh, over a hundred volunteer tractor drivers. Um, if, Mostly retired farmers and contractors who have uh, who put their hands up to say yes, we'll drive in this parade, and they've got the affiliations with these vehicles. Some of them own them, and they're now part of a bigger collection, Alan Dippy's tractor collection, and they just come back to visit them, and then to drive them every second year. Uh, and that's so lovely to see that happening. And then their families coming along, and their grandkids are watching and waving to granddad or grandma. Grandmas have been driving tractors, and, and things are remember great. for their whole life. Yeah, exactly. So that's my highlight. Yeah, yeah the people. Good on you. Yeah. Um, and we went to a uh, 
a tractor show at Ashburton a couple of years ago. And I think I counted 800 tractors. Is there anything like that here? Uh, no. Oh, we're not. We won't not be far, far off. Eh? We no. won't be far off. And give us two years. Um, we've had a real. It's been a real challenge. My role has been the marketing and promotions manager for this. And there's nothing like uh, having an event to promote an event. So this one was always an unknown. People didn't know whether it, they were coming to a, a paddock with some cones in it or something as professional as this. So uh, give it two years so and I think the world will know. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming them to Wanaka in two years' time. <laughs> <laughs> I just listened to the guy talking about the, the tractors are about to come in. So the tractors are up next. Fill the arena up. Correct. Excellent. Oh well folks, after the break we'll have a look at the tractors. On the 9th of November, we leave Auckland on our 8th annual all things vintage tour of New Zealand. If you or somebody you know might like to join us, then just go to our webpage www.logear.co.nz for the itinerary and all the other information. So that's www.logear.co.nz or perhaps just give me a call on 027 277 0717. <laughs> Before we take a look at the tractors, let's take a look back in time. Thousands of tractors have come to New Zealand starting way back in the early 20th century. They came from all over the world, Europe, UK, America, Canada, Australia and so on. Most early tractors had complicated starting mechanisms, like the old bulldog, the field marshal which is started with a bullet, and some you just cranked. They did all sorts of jobs on the farm and in industry. Many examples of the early tractors are here and you'll see them in a minute. As I said before, when they first arrived on the farms, the farmers thought they were absolutely made. Now let's take a look at some of these amazing tractors in this parade. First up in the parade is the bait steel mule. This is a very interesting tractor. Only two ever came to New Zealand and this is one of them. They were built around 1918 and hundreds were manufactured by the Gillette Oil Tractor Company in Chicago. There was an earlier model and this could be controlled by the farm implement that the machine was towing. It's certainly an odd looking thing. Here's another interesting tractor, a Cleveton, which is the predecessor to Clee Track. So that Clee Track's actually got a steering wheel that comes up straight out of the gearbox. The half track on the Fordson Major was manufactured by the Roadless Traction Company as a conversion kit. The tracks could be fitted at the dealers or on the farm. They also manufactured the tracks on this Fordson as well. They began production in 1919 and went all the way through to 1983. The tracks, not a half track. This uh, little caterpillar's got two levers. Pull left, pull right. There's another clean track with that little uh, shape to the, to the bonnet. Well, welcome to the world of tractors. And there are some very old tractors in here. The Lance Bulldog just going by just over there with a Oliver on the outer side of it. 806 Farmall Diesel just going by. Alice Chalmers, Oliver. Super BM Farm Hall and the four wheel drive tractor there looks very odd with sticking out the front with no wheels on. Farm Hall with a young lady driving it. Dual drive it says. Another Chalmers. A Nor Mag that looks very old. Looks like a three cylinder or perhaps a two cylinder engine driving it. Far more, half, half. That's getting back a bit, but it's opposing engine, distance. The far more cup, caterpillar, D2. There are so many tractors in New Zealand, it's just hard to comprehend, really. But when you come to these, when you come to these twos, it's just endless track. Another big V8, Ford V8 over there. And Emerson. 
from Framingham. Well, that's an engine and a half. Look at that, folks. for diesel. Alice Chambers. Looks like it makes roast for potatoes or something like that. Port 4000, Port St. Major. And of course, you can't go anywhere without a Fergie. Case, certainly seen lots of case tractors about. Jumpy. An old Massey Harris, a little wooden blade arrangement on the front, push a bit of dirt, smooth the driveway. Massey Harris. Challenger, look at that. That's probably in the 19, late 1920s, I'd say. Lance Bulldog pumping away there. Let's do something, come on. Here we go. Cormac International. Chamberlain from Australia, they're a popular tractor in Australia, Massey Harris, another Lance Bulldog over there, a smaller one, Massey Harris Pony, this Massey Harris, Massey Harris looks a good neck, look at that engine, beautiful. Lovely engine. There's a lovely little turkey poking its head through the gap. Lovely mud guards on it. Look at that. Make it look a bit smarter. Messy Harris four wheel drive. That was a bit of a dangerous thing in its time. The giant Don there mowing them all down. It's great to see these old tractors going. Most of the time you just see them when they're sitting in museums um, and just, you know, you just look at them, but to see them up and running is amazing. Nineteen thirty seven John Deere. I, I guess it's painted green. Look at that, look at that engine. Two cylinders. and bully on the far side there with the, the big tracks and the big wheels and all the tracks. Look at that over there. Another case. <laughs> They're all here. Another Chamberlain. The driver's as happy as the sandboy. Look at that. Oversized. That means he's pulling an oversized load or is the tractor oversized? Well, I love the little door on the chamber and just a sack tied up. Look at that. 
Top made a good sack. International, I think there might be an international caller on the other side of that, but we probably won't see it. Oh, yep. There he is. Sneaking out the far side there, though. Another international caller going along. Case International Magnum. About 1980 something. It's amazing how they've come to cabs. Every other tractor in here hasn't got a cab, but all the latest tractors all have cabs. Stereos, electric starts. And here we have a lovely big radar. Look at that. Now that's probably 19, 1920 something. There's a crank on the front of that engine, but God knows how you do it. Case caller. He's a beauty. Minneapolis, Moline. One big piston in there. There's a Indianapolis or Minneapolis Moline. Another Imperial. Same. Great big flywheel there. Looks like this one's been around the world a few times. France, Spain, Wales. Same with the caravan. Oh, there's a row of farm walls, I think. All in all, I'd have to say that the farm wall was probably the most important tractor in the country. They must have had good salesmen in most little towns. Oh, so. well, mind you, some little towns had Case, some little towns had International. I guess it was the firm who was selling the things and what ended up in various little towns. Well, green Oliver, yeah, look at that. Lovely little tractor. Comes a double, a double one coming. And here's a four wheel drive with the engine stuck out the front. How to make a four-wheel drive, I know, let's stick another tractor on the front. Oh, that's a good idea. Country and it's just got a very small little engine tucked up in front of the steering wheel and the rest of it is just bonnet with a steering arm through the middle of it to steer the, to steer the thing. Hard part, bumping along. Another case. Another case. We're coming along behind them. The cases are there's a Wallace and these Wallaces are pretty rare. I've seen uh, probably four and our travels around the country, but this is a very rare tractor indeed. Simplistic engine. Got a little crank handle device out the front. On the 9th of November, we leave Auckland on our 8th annual All Things Vintage Tour of New Zealand. If you, or somebody you know, might like to join us, 
and just go to our webpage www.logear.co.nz for the itinerary and all the other information. So that's www.logear.co.nz or perhaps just give me a call on 027 277 0717. There were plenty of trucks at the event but before we look at the parade let's have a look at some of the trucks that were on static display. First, the International on the Hill. It certainly looks apart sitting there, and the inside is just like it's been for a long time, cobwebs and all. Next is the 1950s shaped TS3 comma. Some trucking bosses said they didn't actually make any money until they got commas. The old Q Dodge with the LAD cab did its share of work back in the day, as did the Ford Thames trader next to it. Some say the old trader was better put together than the D-Series Ford that came after it. Next up is an early Mack truck. The New Zealand Railway brought Mack trucks similar to this one into New Zealand. It's been restored from top to bottom by owner Graham Manson. Just look at that dash. Next, another Mack, the B-Series. They didn't come to New Zealand, but Aussie had a few of them. And finally, this beautiful Road Boss White, turning diesel into music since 1938, says on the bonnet. Awesome. Yeah, and just, just touching on the Mike Lambert truck that's coming through. Uh, it's going to come down through the Highlands flags. Now, of course, people, if you're, uh, if you're in the trucks and you know a bit about them, you probably won't recognise that colour scheme. Mike Lambert went away from that a little bit into the, uh, the black and the white and the red. They were always stunning looking and they were logging trucks. They were hard working trucks. So when we say Mike Lambert, that's what it originally looked like and it has changed a little bit since those days. That's absolutely. The red Kenworth coming around was one of Mike Lambert's trucks. Mike Lambert is famous for his logging business in the Bay of Plenty in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Mike's livery back then was red. This Kenworth has been bought by Southpac Trucks and fully restored and brought down especially for this event. Mike Lambert had many Kenworths hauling for his logging business. Over a thousand, he told me. Another famous Kenworth in New Zealand was one they called the Concord. And Mike Lambert bought this in, in 1973. The thing about it, it was very quick at the time and had a Detroit V12 in it. Wanaka's George Wallace had the Concorde for about 10 or 12 years. And as I said, Mackie here this weekend, if you like to look at some of these big trucks, you can go over and talk to the team there. And we know that uh, Mangatua Contracting really love their, uh, their Kenworths, and you can see, uh, I think, three of them out here at the moment. The old girl, four out here at the moment, the old girl that I'm not sure is out here at the moment, the old water truck was actually one of the first ones they ever bought, so they've kept that one in the fleet, but they are very, very much Kenworth Orient, and uh, it's, it's definitely a little bit harder to drive than I imagine the, uh, the new ones are, so uh, if you get put on that job down there in the subdivision, you know, either there's something wrong, or you must really, really like the truck, so it's, uh, it's one of those things. Absolutely. Yeah. And this yellow and green map here is the very first map. On the 9th of November, we leave Auckland on our 8th annual All Things Vintage Tour of New Zealand. If you, or somebody you know, might like to join us, then just go to our webpage www.logear.co.nz for the itinerary and all the other information. So that's www.logear.co.nz or perhaps just give me a call on 027 277 0717. At the beginning of the show we looked at this being loaded in, in uh, Cambridge to be brought down here and they're going to use it uh, probably tomorrow, it's a bit too uh, muddy today. But uh, this is called the Buzz and Dozen and it came from the USA, brought in by the Ross brothers to uh, add to their museum. But it's great of them to bring this down for everybody to have a look at because a lot of the, the people at this show will remember 
these things working around the South Island. Um, you could start it in 1933 and went through to about 1970. And for some court action, blah, 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 they couldn't use the name Euclid anymore, so it got changed to Terex, and uh, Terra meaning Earth. That's said right. Yeah. But you, yeah, look at it, the blade's all on winches and ropes, and that sort of thing to lift up, no cab and that sort of thing. Some, you know, the dozer drivers of today wouldn't know what to do if they got into that, would they? Today? To, today's <laughs> dozer drivers no, got probably. into it. No, yeah. so lifting up with a cable, that's, that's a whole balance game, you yeah. know, you sort of, yeah. The, um, and, but it's, there's two parts of this, it's got an engine on that side and an engine on this yeah. side, both uh, Detroit 671s, and this engine drives this track, and the other engine drives the other track. So if you wanted to spin, you just speed one engine up and you just start slow to turn, down. or yeah. slow one down, or slip one in reverse and backwards, and the thing will turn around by itself, but it's an act to drive, it's not yeah. just one engine. Yeah, it's actually right. Yeah, yeah. A wee bit of skill involved, isn't it? <laughs> I'll say, but it's, uh, it's got twin everything. And it, the, uh, they say it was quite noisy because the, uh, all the fans for the air are in the back here, right behind the driver, and he's got to listen to this going in the old air all, all day long. So uh, then listen to 271 yeah, scream their heads off in right. the front. <laughs> Need so, a good set of earmuffs, don't you? <laughs> Air muffs? Yeah. What are they? You just sit there and enjoy it. Mind you, I suppose it's good, you know, it'd be a good excuse at night when you know, the missus was grumpy with you, wouldn't it? Oh, I can't, you know, sorry dear, I can't hear you. I can't hear a thing. No. Been on the dozer all day. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better get up and have a look at the controls, did not we? So anyway, up in the top here, there's uh, air cleaners for the engine. There's uh, gauges for the oil pressure and others. There's, uh, you look the part there, Goose Reader. <laughs> Bit different, actually. Yeah. This one says start, shall I try it? <laughs> actually, it's very, very old school, isn't it? All the analog gauges and that sort of thing. Of course, there's two sets, one for that engine and one for this one. That's right. Health and safety wouldn't allow stuff like that today, would they? Oh, well, who cares? Good air conditioning in it, though. <laughs> Windows aren't going to get dirty, are they? No, certainly not. Oh, it's very... Uh, Looks very simple to drive. Yeah, it probably is. Until you sort of get out there and... Oh, yeah. driving is one thing, operating it's something different, isn't <laughs> That's it? That's right. Yeah, you know, how, how far you got your blade down and how much soil you want to move and that sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, this is, as I said, this is the biggest bulldozer in, uh, in its time. It was the, the monster. And it certainly attracted a lot of attention here at, uh, at Wanaka today, that's for sure. And tomorrow when the fine's up a bit, Hopefully we'll see it in action. Well, it looks like we won't have to wait until tomorrow. This is Tim Ross from the Ross Brothers in Cambridge who own this machine and he's going to start it up and give us a demo in the local paddock behind where all the machines are on display. Good on you, Tim. me is Richard Campbell and uh, Richard is a recognised uh, authority and things earth moving and welcome to the show Richard. Thank you Bill. What we've got here is a TC12 and um, how many came to New Zealand? There was eight of them in total brought in by Clyde Engineering. Um, this one makes nine and there's also rumoured to be another one being brought in by a collector in the Hawke's Bay. So, so what happened to the other, well the other eight? The, um, they've all been, well, one preserved in Southland, there's a machine that was saved from the scrapper by um, the Ross brothers in Cambridge, and the rest unfortunately have been cut up and gone to that big tractor heaven in the sky. <laughs> Listen to that. Music of our nation, the finest way of turning diesel into noise. What holds this together? A very substantial pivot shaft in the back end ties the 
two ends together and in the front there's a sliding roller bearing which allows oscillation of the front half up and down. Now you can see that the split in between the two there do they, is there, are there opposing forces there or have they got that There are right? some opposing forces but the size of the pivot shaft in the back of that machine is very substantial. And uh, three ways to steer it? Three ways to steer. You can use the uh, throttles to vary the speed of each engine. You can use the uh, transmission shift levers to have one transmission in a higher or lower gear which will allow you to turn. And you can also put one transmission into forward and the other into reverse and do a spot turn should you wish. The machine that Ray Shearing got out of the lake, they tell me that one of the engines wouldn't go, which means you couldn't, couldn't steer it. Um, you need both engines. It would only go in one direction, correct. Yeah. Like round in circles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big fan behind the driver. You know, with, uh, what's that about? There's two separate radiators in the back, one for each engine. Uh, they're driven by an extension shaft uh, from the engine and that keeps, um, keeps the radiators out of harm's way, basically. Oh, okay, so we are driving in the bush or something like that, it just... Yes, it would, uh, it would help prevent sticks going through the radiator, although not a great deal of TC12s have I seen in the bush. With me again is Richard Campbell, and Richard, that's a, a Latorno invented ripper. Yes it is, that's a Model H ripper. There were three basic types of Latorno ripper, the Model K, which was a super heavy duty, the Model H, which that is, and the Model S for smaller tractors like the D7 and the D6. And um, the Draper's on the D7 there, is that's it? That's a D7F, I think. Is that four cylinders or six? No, oh, that is in fact the D8. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. In fact, the D8 with a caterpillar number 80 behind it. And uh, what have we got here? D8 again? A D8. D8 14 or 15A. They're quite hard to tell apart. The 14A has a direct drive transmission. The 15A has a torque converter transmission. And what have we got here? See how the, the, the earth is rolling? It's just the shape of the blade doing that? Proper blade curvature and uh, it's been set up properly by the operator and that is just ploughing through that dirt. Looks beautiful. That's how it should look. And the scraper, uh, sorry, the uh, ripper's behind this machine so it's a two job yes, operation. Yes, it, uh, it can rip hard ground if necessary. It's a caterpillar ripper on behind that machine. And uh, just looking at the uh, the hydraulics, they about halfway up, or just a little bit over halfway, they're on a gimbal arrangement. Yes, that is correct. This is a cable blade, and uh, there was a feel, you had a feel with the cable blades. Yes, you did. Um, cable blades are uh, very good. I learned on a cable blade machine, so... Oh, okay. And this, uh, what, what is the name of this Euclid? This is a Euclid 16 TDT. Uh, it was the first twin-powered machine ever imported into New Zealand and the first twin-powered scraper marketed by Euclid that was successful. And it needs a bulldozer to push it? Uh, ideally, yes. Oh, okay, but it can work on its own. It can it? work on its own, but its loading times are longer. Oh, okay, so the bulldozer behind it speeds it up? Yes, it does. It, it increases production. And there's Vic Draper again on his, on his tractor. And, and looking from the, the air, we've got the... Uh, the Alice Chalmers coming into view on the, on the left hand side there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about 13 or 14 dozers at, at work in the field there, and one, two, three, four, five, six scrapers. A wonderful sight.
And they're all having fun. Absolutely. Look at these two, they're just absolutely lo loving it. That's Paul McNay on that one. He comes here a lot. He actually lives in Australia. And uh, there's that nuclear once again. Look at that. Everybody working together. Would, would there actually be a, you know, in times gone by, there would have been a construction site looking something like this? Yes, in the 1950s. But it's not unusual to actually see that on you know, an American roading plant or anything. No, that, yeah. that would be a, a familiar site. It's yes, down when they were doing the Twizel uh, canals, it would have looked something like that. Machines everywhere. Yes, machines everywhere. But all going about a designated purpose. Yes, so somebody's in charge of oh, we need that bit of dirt put there and that put there and that over there and Correct. blah blah blah. I think uh, Max Smith was the, um, the boss down in Twizel. He, he must have been a magnificent engineer. Anyway, we've got here a, a small um, dozer, it looks like a D3 or 4 or 5. It's a Caterpillar D47U and it's towing a Caterpillar number 40 scraper. What would that job it would be sort of like the council work, something like that? A good council size machine or something for the small contractor, uh, someone doing farm work, ideal size machine. There they all are, all being enjoyed. <laughs> well, what have we got here? Oh, there's the uh, tractors dragging the uh, Latorno up the hill. Yes, Caterpillar D82U. Were there many other D8s? There must have been a huge number of D8s came to New Zealand. There's yeah. well over a thousand D8s came to New Zealand. And they're still coming in, in the later models of the high track drive. So the first one was called a what? first model was called an RD8. Oh, that's right. Along the way, Caterpillar dropped the RD from the designation and just called them D8s. From about 1937 onwards, they were just known as D8s. And the RD has some contention in our travels around the place. And it's, it's, it seems to be uh, stand for Rudolf. Rudolf Diesel. That's, yes. uh, that's the story that I was told, that it stood for Rudolf Diesel, in honour of his inventing the diesel engine. Caterpillar put their first diesel engine into a tractor in 1931. Okay, previous that, they were petrol Ah, uh, Yes, they were big, big displacement petrol engines. Can you see that um, Alice Chalmers spinning there with his... With his yes, he's, he's making good of hard going there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> needs one, needs a, one of those D9s up as the bottom yeah. to give him a bit of a shove, yeah. <laughs> you see the cables in, in the foreground here, I so, you know, there's a fair share of those dozers that got cables. And here we have our uh, TC12 looking down from a drone shot and you can just see the, the split right up the middle. And you were saying before there's a substantial shaft in the back. Very big pivot shaft in the back. But the interesting part about that dozer is its blade. It's got a universal dozer on it, or U-dozer. Not really meant for pushing scrapers, it's meant for bulk earth moving. Right. Oh. This is uh, pushing a little bit of uphill. Well, I guess that must mean hard, pushing uphill. Oh, it's a tough job for a tractor. And uh, looking at the, the uh, hydraulics on that one, it looks like it must be an early one because they're, they're right at the top. This is an early Caterpillar hydraulic installation. It appears to be on a D6, so it's probably a 9U model. But Caterpillar's early hydraulics the cylinders were suspended from the top end. Uh, there's a, a lot of the tractors have the, the, uh, the U. What did that stand for? The, the, the 9U is just the, the serial number designation. Oh, so you didn't have it, it was just the... Just part of the serial number designation. Oh, okay. And you can see the one, one side down, one side up there as it's uh, you know, one oscillating away. It's quite a clever arrangement, um, the Garwood cable control on that machine, which allows for uh, oscillation of both halves while still maintaining... Um, a straight blade. A straight blade, yes. <laughs> It looks like he's going to. Oh yeah, he looks like he's going to get in behind this uh, this machine. Yes, he is. He's going to come and give this caterpillar. Just looking at the uh, at the scraper in front. There's a whole panel there on the on, on the back of it where an engine might have been. Well, Paul Clark's uh, 660B is an interesting machine because it used to be a triple six. It used to have a Cat D343 engine in the rear. 
but it's been taken out and removal of that engine turns it back into a conventional 660. It still has the planetary wheel covers on it though. Oh, okay. We've got two tractors pushing along now and uh, I guess that needs it, you were saying before, that actually needs all that pushing powder. Very and sensible for a scraper of that size and capacity. Uh, tandem pushing is the norm. Um, 660s are still used in the United States these days, uh, but they're all tandem pushed in order to uh, get a good load in a short space of time. And uh, this guy's had enough, he's going to go and do something else. Yes, he's banking off now. <laughs> I just saw uh, in a shot just, just previous that the blade lifted on the TC12 and lifted those back wheels up. That wouldn't be very good. Would no, it? not an ideal situation, especially with a U-dozer where the uh, outside parts of the wings could clip the tyres, which would be a very expensive accident. So what's a tyre worth these days, roughly? A tyre on that machine has got to be worth between ten and $12,000 each. <laughs> now, there's a nice shot with the... <laughs> Two Euclid's driving side by side. Yeah, not <laughs> uncommon sight in New Zealand. Well, he's passing by and the dirt's falling off and he's got a, a dozer up at the bottom giving it of that wheel yes, where he's, he's starting to spin. He's got a good 24 cubic yards yeah, on there. Yeah, he's sliding up that blade. Yes. Yeah, see that. But he's still got his two engines as well, so that's a hell of a lot of horsepower to, to move one bit of dirt. So 190 horsepower each engine on a 16 TDT. Yes, yeah. they went round and round. They did this about uh, about seven or eight times. And there it is. He's Giving it the old heave ho, and uh, he's nearly full. I think he might be backing off. Yes, he's on his way now. Just on his right hand side now, I've just slowed the footage down so you can see this blue machine, and that's a Vickers. I think that's the one that lives in Palmerston North. So, it's the Palmerston North machine, it's a Vickers Vicon. If it's the machine from up north, yeah, no, <laughs> meaning that one, that further up, meaning Fangare, yeah, yeah. it's a, a VR 160 Vicon. And they were, I think they were a bit of commentary about those being used on airports. Yes, they were. Um, the Ministry of Works had a fleet of them. Um, not particularly good blade machines, but very fast track, uh, scraper towing machines. And that truck? A International Pay Hauler 350C. I oh, see so it's got dual wheels in the front and the back. Yes, that machine's all-wheel drive. Oh, okay. Well. Wow. And a smaller truck over the back, or about the same size. Yeah. Anyway, so here we come. We've nearly concluded our uh, bit about the earth moving. Here's some old footage of the Benmore Dam, and uh, that's a D9, you were saying? Yes, that's a D9. It's delivering fill material. And there's the hole they have to fill in. So, what have we got there? We've got uh, a fleet of D8s helping to close the diversion channel. And the Ministry of Works would have had D8s coming out their ears. They I did have a lot of D8s in those days. They had American production D8s and British production D8s as well. Um, most of them had long service lives with the Ministry of Works and weren't disposed of until the late 1970s. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. A little bit of history about the old earth weaving. <laughs>